Thank you, Gretchen. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. We're okay? I'll talk loud. I'll get my teacher voice. Is that okay? Yes. First of all, I want to thank you all for having me again. It seems like about this time in the last couple of years, we have something come up, and, and I appreciate it. I enjoy speaking to you as a group. I'm just going to lay out a few facts as I know it about charter schools. I'll walk over here because I have my iPad with my notes, but I'll try to uh, be brief, and then uh, I'll answer any questions that I can, okay? Uh, and if not, I prefer all the tough ones to Al Rowell in the back. He knows a lot more than I do for So, so uh, I appreciate Al being here. First, I just want to make a couple of uh, comments about uh, charter schools. First of all, uh, I'm not opposed to charter schools when established and, and for the right reasons and controlled and operated by local communities. We have 315 charter schools in the state of Georgia right now. Did you know that? In three years, it's doubled. There were 160 three years ago. And all but 19 of those charter schools were asked for, established, agreed upon by local communities. They said, we want a charter school. We need a charter school. We need to address a group of children Maybe at least, maybe another group of students, maybe gifted, maybe some that just need an extra push. So 315 charter schools governed by local, local communities. Um, I'm not opposed to that charter school, okay? I'll give you an example. We have one close by here, Berry County, that is very successful with that local board of education and that local community represented by those people are operating. I can't argue with that. It's about the children. So I, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, the process that currently is in place is in place in every community. Do you know that in this community, if we all wanted a charter school, we could have a charter school? Did you know that? Yes. We could. It's already in place. All we have to do is ask, get our local boards of education, either the Dallas City School System, Lowndes County School System, to endorse the idea, to work with us, and we can start a charter school. And the school systems would not lose any money. That sounds like it's already in place, doesn't it? Yep. So, the question then comes about, why, why do I need this amendment? Uh, it's about, and I'm going to tell you what, this is Troy's opinion based on what I've heard, read, and my knowledge of. The vote is about control and about being told by the legal branch of government, no. Just a little history behind this. The state, the state wants to control charter schools. And it was told no based on Governor Purdue's uh, legislation, House Bill 881, 2008. It gave a charter school commission the power to overrule and determine charter schools in local communities. And the Supreme Court, I'm probably telling you what you already know, the Supreme Court ruled 4 3 that. That was illegal. It was unconstitutional. And they could not do that. Thus, the need for a constitutional amendment. And that's how we got here. The question is, to me, who is behind this vote? Well, if you pull up, and, and I'll help you with this, if you pull up who is the friends of education or whatever that group is, uh, you pull their donation list up their expense report, their finance report to, from the election committee, you'll find that 30% of those folks are not from Georgia. $250,000 of their money came from one place, one of the Wal Walmart Harris. One of the Walmart folks donated $250,000. The bulk of their money is coming from her 
and the those companies that would profit from charter schools. For-profit charter school providers. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It makes sense that they would want to support it, right? Because they stand in line to make money. And we're going to talk about their, their uh, ability or achievement ability in a few minutes. How they fare in their charter schools when compared to public schools. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Um, let's talk about where public schools are right now. I will be the first to tell you this is my 25th year. And if you ask any educator with any grain of salt or any businessman who's running their business, they'll, can you do it better? Do you want to improve? Absolutely. I've been preaching this now for 25 years. I need to improve myself spiritually, physically, mentally. I need to improve how I go to work every day, how I work every day, and what we're doing every day. So public schools are not immune to that. We need to continue to improve. We need to continue to leave no child. We need to help every child. So I'll be the first to tell you that. Do you know that 93% 93 of all children in the state of Georgia go to a public school? 93%. I'm not going to ask you to raise hands, but I'll raise mine. I'm a graduate of a public school. I'm a graduate of public universities. <coughs> I am in colleges. One in Atkinson County, Pearson, Georgia. That's where I graduated. I'm a graduate. I'm the first one in my family that ever went to college. My mom is a GED graduate. I'm just as proud of her as she can spell any word in the, in the dictionary. She is a smart lady. But I'm a part of public schools. And there are a lot, lot, lot smarter people out there. Most everybody I meet is a product of public schools. 93% of our students are there. Where are we at financially? You know, it's in 2002, and you all know what happened in 2002. We have, the public schools have been cut $6.6 .6 billion of money that their children and teachers have earned in the classroom. $6.6 .6 billion. This year, this fiscal year, it's been tough economic times, okay? We've all had to slim up cut back, change, we understand that. But do you know this past fiscal year, our legislator passed the third largest budget in the history of Georgia? Did you know that? The third largest budget in the history of Georgia. $19.1 billion. Yet, the Lowndes County School System lost nearly $8 million this this year, right here, we're working in right here. Eight million dollars in our teachers and students are. In this 10 year period, we've lost 43 million dollars at the state earnings. That's more than one a lot this year. So, my question is that if you want to see the public schools work, and you want them to work, why don't you fully fund them and then hold them accountable. 1985 QBE Act was passed. It's never been fully funded. But in the last 10 years, it has been severely underfunded. So my, my question is, would you, would you want to be evaluated or would you want to be replaced by something before you were given a full opportunity with a complete set of tools to make a difference. You wouldn't want to be fired from your employer if you were in charge of digging ditches if they didn't give you a shovel, right? That's my old farm analogy. I was also raised on a, on a farm in Aston County. So why do we need charter schools? Let's talk about what's going on right now. During this whole time, this, this time, since 2008, the number of public school students has increased by 37,438 children. 37,438 children. 
But because of this law of $6.6 billion, 4,280 teachers have lost their jobs. It's tough times. It's tough times. 121 of the 188, 180 school systems have reduced their calendar. Instead of offering 180 school days to children, they reduced their calendar. 121 of 180 districts. Yet we can go out and start charter schools. We have money to chart, start charter schools. I'm gonna, where is that money going to come from? We'll talk about that in just a second. I'm, I'm, I don't want to keep you all night now, but let's, let's talk about the number of charter schools. 160 in 2010-11. Uh, Last year, there were 217. This year, there's 315. If you want a charter school, there must be somehow to get one, is Right? No. You can. Let's talk about um, parental choice. Have y'all heard of that? Yes. Rhetoric? Yes. We want to give the people a choice. Originally, it was it was a, a party decision, right, that we want this to go to constitutional amendment. Now it's about giving the people a choice. There's 315 charter schools and over 500 private schools in the state of Georgia. How much choice do you need? How much choice do you need? That's 800 choices, right? Even here in our county, we have choice. Though. Let's talk about uh, achievement, AYP achievement, okay? AYP, no child left behind, George W. Bush, right? Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. 73% of the school system, of the public schools, met AYP, 73%. 70% of the charter schools met AYP. 55% of the for-profit, those same people that are back in this financial, 55% of the for-profit charter schools met AYP. Is that a couple of children? 73% meet AYP. 70% of the charter schools, and remember now, um, 315 of those, only 19 was not asked for by local communities. And then those four profits, only 55% of them made AYP. Do you all know that AYP is, a, is, a, is kind of a, a, a minimum standard back and then it just grows? Eventually it was supposed to make it where most of us can make AYP. You know? Because one of the provisions was all children could read on grade level by age, whatever. That'd be like saying all of us will be able to run the New York Marathon and complete it within a certain amount of time. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't even get past the start line without pumping and pumping and asking where the water was. So I know one of us would make it big. So AYP, so student achievement. Charter schools are better for children. Have you heard that? Parent choice. Really? Uh, these are just real facts. Uh, let's talk about how much it's going to cost. $430 million is what it will cost if this amendment passes. $430 million. Do you know how, many, how much money is in the budget for the state budget for charter schools? Shoe tie in Sorry about that. I heard they don't teach shoe tie in school anymore. They don't do it. Thank the Lord, my mother taught me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I know I was a high school, an elementary school principal. I sure tied a bunch of shoes. Did that rabbit thing, and I can't remember how I did it. Um, do you do you know that uh, it's going to cost? That much money, and how much money is in the Georgia budget? The third largest budget in the history of Georgia. Do you know how much money is in there for charter schools? None. None. 
Do you know where it's going to come from? Public local school systems. I'm going to give you an example in just a minute. Local school systems are going to pay for it. And oh, by the way, guess what they're not going to do? They're not, we're not going to pay for it at the same rate that uh, the public school is reimbursed. I got, I got this number here. I have this number from, uh, just a second, let me find it. I, I want you to hear this. This is important. I received this from the um, chief, here we go, the deputy director of House Budget and Research Office on 8-24, August 24th of this year. And I'm just going to read this if you don't mind. It says, it says that, she says, state special charter schools will earn $6,392 per FTE. It's a little more complicated than this, than this, but just think of that as $6,392 per child. Okay? Just think of it that way. In state dollars, while traditional K-12 schools will earn an average of $4,290 per FTE. So not only are we going to give dollars away, we're not even giving the same dollars away, right? We're giving multiple dollars away. That's not my, my number. That's the House Deputy Chief of the Budget. So let's talk about an example, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up and we'll ask questions. Let's say that this is voted in, okay? And we want to put a charter school in Lowndes County, Valdosta, and we're going to pull from K-5 students, okay? There's 13 elementary schools between the Lowndes and Valdosta City School System, okay? And we want a charter school of K-5 students with one with of 600 students, all right? That's a good little elementary school, isn't it? We could do a lot of work with that. That's 50 students per school. Just for simple math. That's 50 per school we're going to take out. Now, think about this. Six grades, right? And I'm going to take 50 children out of it. If I don't take those children from one or two grades, 25 first graders, 25 second graders, 25 second graders, 25 third graders. Let's say I take for easy math, 10 students out of five of those grades. Do you know that that school will not be able to reduce their staff at all? Zero. They won't be able to close a class. Do y'all follow what I'm doing? If they don't come out of two grades, all of them, they will not be able to close a classroom. You still have to have the same number of teachers, same number of parapros, same electrical bill, same busing, same meals, same infrastructure, same utilities. The cost is the same, right? But the state just gave 50 of those dollars times about 1.9%. I mean 1.9, almost double, what am I talking you see the $6,000, they just give that to the charter school. So that school now still has the same number of expenses. It's been cut $6.6 .6 billion, their share, and now it's lost 50 times $6,300. But they have to cut expenses. There are no charge cards, by the way, in school system. You can't pull out the MasterCard and pay those bills. So who do you think just got the burden of paying for charter schools? The local taxpayer just got the burden. Does that math make sense? That absolutely makes sense. So, so now, instead of having a local controlled charter school, which, by the way, we could start today, if this is going to be taxes, we get a state.
state-controlled charter school, it's going to reimburse at a larger rate than our local children get, and the cost is going to be passed on to who? The local taxpayers, me and you. So, you notice I had said both yes or no. <laughs> I just said, I just said the facts, right? The facts. The fact is that this whole thing was brought up because a group of people were told no by the Supreme Court. You can't do that. It's unconstitutional. And two-thirds of your House and Senate and your governor, our governor, voted and signed off on this to be on the Constitutional Amendment to give the people a choice when they already have 800 choices. <coughs> have you ever been to a buffet? Does the plate run out after a while? It does, do I mean, you can only have so much choice. And who's going to go to these charter schools? I don't mind telling y'all. Y'all know I ate free and reduced lunch. I ate free reduced lunch. I rode the bus. Got on it at quarter to seven, got off of it at four thirty, went in, ate whatever my mom gave me, and went to work till dark did my homework. Do you know who wouldn't have went to a charter school? You me. I wouldn't have went to a charter school. I'm proud of where I came from. Okay? I'm proud of my teachers. 